me and may not known about Doctor Who. This time we're going to have a look at one of the most popular stories of the New Who era, one of the most popular 10th Doctor stories, and one that is actually a remake of an old story. Human nature slash family of blood. I hope you enjoy. So to start off with, a fact that many of you may already know is that this story is in fact a remake of a 7th Doctor story under the same name. In fact, it shares the same writer. The 7th Doctor story is more or less the same with a few differences, such as human characters being completely different. The original story was in fact the highest rated Doctor Who story before it was adapted onto screen. With Julie Gardner as producer, this is the first time since Mission of the Unknown a woman is credited as a producer of an episode. Filming took place at St. Fagan's National Museum of History. Both stories were nominated for the Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation. John Smith's Imaginary Wedding and the Memorial Day scenes both took place at Landaff Cathedral. The Doctor as John Smith believes his parents are called Sidney and Verity, which is a reference to both Sidney Newman and Verity Lambert. This is the first time in the revival era that racism is involved and directed to a companion. This story is the first appearance of the Chameleon Arc. The sketchbook John Smith holds is the first time in the revival era to show anything from the classic era, even if it's just drawings. In a deleted scene, the Doctor tells Martha to not let him eat pears, as he doesn't like them. This was cut because, well, it was unnecessary. The receptacle for the Doctor's identity was originally going to be a cricket ball, which referenced the Fifth Doctor and the Doctor's love of cricket. However, it was changed to a pocket watch, similar to the Eighth Doctor, as it was something that could be opened. The Scarecrows were added last minute, as Russell T Davies wanted a traditional monster in the story. John Smith's birthplace is Gallifrey, which is said to be in Ireland. However, it is stated that Smith was brought up in Nottingham, to reflect David Tennant's desire to continue using his English accent. There was going to be a twist, where Martha was originally going to be revealed to be from 1914. This was changed as it felt too confusing. The cliffhanger for part one was originally John Smith conflicted with the idea of forcing the schoolboys to shoot the family of blood. Obviously this was changed and was inserted in part two later on. The school's name was changed from the Holton's Academy for Boys to the Farringham School for Boys. The family of blood were originally going to have more organic looking weapons. Joan Redfern is the third character in the revival to decline going with the Doctor after Sarah Jane Smith and Donna. However, both Sarah Jane and Donna would go on to join him in the next series. When Hutchinson called Latimer a filthy coward, Latimer responds by saying, Oh yes sir, every time. This is a reference to the parting of the ways, where the Doctor responds to the Dalek Emperor, coward any day. Two weeks of heavy rain caused issues when they were filming. The narration of the family's immortal fate was originally going to be said by Sister of Mine, rather than Son of Mine. However, due to Son of Mine being the main family member and the main antagonist, he was the one to deliver the narration. The role of Phillips was to be given to Nicholas Briggs, but he declined as the role was too small. David Tennant had lost his voice during filming, which also created several issues production-wise. Sister of Mine was originally called Wainwright, but this was changed as a character in the following story, Blink, shared that name. Sister of Mine was originally going to be the main family member and the main villain of the family of blood, but she was instead replaced by Son of Mine. Her red balloon would have had some relevance like it did in the original novel, but again, this was also dropped. And that is it for today, I hope you enjoyed. Human Nature slash Family Blood is certainly one of the best David Tennant stories. It is absolutely fantastic. Everything about it is just great. It works so, so well. It's certainly one of my favourites of the Russell D. Davies era, and obviously what my, one of my favourites of the David Tennant era overall. Is it my personal favourite? Well, no, not really. I still prefer Girl in the Fireplace, but this is definitely up there. Up there with the likes of Journey's End and, of course, Doomsday. But this one is a fantastic story. I love the idea of the Doctor being human for the story and not really being useful at all. And needing to come back to f combat a relatively small threat, all things considered, but a threat nonetheless. A threat that managed to expose him for who he really is. And it also shows the vulnerability of the Doctor as well, which is absolutely fantastic. I love this story, and I'm sure many of you do too as well. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Did You Know Doctor Who, and I'll see you next time.